at the end of Matter Boxing and Anthony Joshua met Deontay Brown's Bob Water for the first time ever. Yeah, is Water and Joshua differently like linking up? You tip it off with seeing Eddie and Frank within touching distance as well. It's um, it's Water ver being very nice, very calm, very grateful. Joshua the same. Joshua sometimes he looks very like um he looks like he lo I don't know Joshua might must be a very shy guy like that sometimes he looks like he's shy you know what I mean and the other boxing kicked it off with um Deontay Water finally after so many back and forth you know were uh, uh, um were words of of war. Um, so many things being said, so many, like, so many, like, I don't remember when Eddie Hill mocked Deontay Water dead, and we called him all sort of names, Water the same, called Eddie Hill a devil, the, uh, Water calling Joshua a scared, uh, a scared rabbit, and then, bro, what do you guys make of this right here, this link, all right here? I mean, it's nice to see two brothers come together in i'm referring to joshua and water water is very proud of his roots you know joshua the same and we all know that this card has been it's been it's been like basically built for uh for both of them though if they get the win they meet next and it's gonna be fireworks if that happens but at the press conference water was very vocal he said listen uh, I'm happy for you. I hope it happens. If it doesn't happen, it's not no bad thing. Water is a humble guy, but when he's in a water, the water, water the guy is a humble guy, but water the fighter, whenever he's in that fight mode, becomes a total different person that you don't recognize. Uh Adewale, I know how much you hate and you hear no matter boxing. And you don't like you like Joshua, <laughs> but you are not really a fan. Like you're a water fan, differently. What was your first reaction when we 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 saw this, bro? I'm not even kidding you when I say this. I I felt like a child watching Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior being friends. No, let me look for a better analogy from a Niger perspective. Um. Um, which one of those great rivalries did we have in the in the nineties? You know, in the early nineties that we grew up on, like Tales by Moonlight type of stuff, Sesame Street. I'm, look, I can't even articulate myself properly. I was so excited seeing those two guys standing next to each other, shaking hands. I saw Wilder addressing AJ, bro. We are. I wish you the best. If the fight happens, even if it doesn't happen, I wish you the best, man. Bro, I love Wilder, man. The guy is very mature. Some people say it's fake, but that's maturity, man. You let it go. You guys have had the beef for years, and the beef wasn't even between Wilder and AJ, if you think about it. It was Barry Hearn and Eddie Hearn. Those guys are the reason why a lot of us started criticizing AJ so bad. And obviously, the extremist fanatics. So, I was very happy. It was a refreshing moment for me respect to wilder for humbling himself and for you know showing aj the respect that i believe aj deserves and respect to eddie hearn sorry no no eddie hearn respect to wilder for burying the the hatchet between himself and eddie i heard they were stuck in a, on a flight for 10 hours so they didn't even have the choice they had to communicate because they were sitting down close to each other on the on the flight with Malik Scott, his trainer, and they had to have conversations. I mean, Eddie Hearn, the guy was so arrogant in the beginning, very very arrogant, very, you know, he, he just called Wilder that that guy from Alabama, you know. Oh no, nobody knows him. Know nobody knows him. You know, the guy was so disrespectful, and that's why we did not like. That's why we did not like the guy, period. So I'm happy they came together. I'm happy they came together and the fight will potentially happen. And we are keeping our fingers crossed. 
Adewale, sorry, just before you go, sorry, Ray. I'm, yes, just, gonna add, I'm just going to mention this because I want you to address it, right? Um, just before you go, real quick. Now, did you watch the interview Wilder conducted with Channel 4? Um, I think Channel 4 or Channel 5, right after the press conference, where Wilder went back and started saying how AJ docked him, how he sent 50 million. That's one thing. As much as I'm beginning to now like Wilder and I'm beginning to really embrace him, let me put it that way. There are things it does sometimes where I don't understand. You're in the presence of the man and you said all these nice things. And as soon as they put the camera in your face and the man is not in your presence, you started talking about the 50 million again. You started talking about how they you sent 50 million offer and he didn't accept it and he has talked to you and blah, blah, blah. What would you say about that? You know what? If you noticed that guy, the main guy in the press conference, the guy that AJ shut down. I, I don't know that guy's name. That guy was trying to play the same game, asking Wilder, do you think anyone on this table prevented you from having a unification fight in your career? And Wilder just played it off saying, you know, this is not the best time to talk about that. We are here to make a great event, blah, blah, blah. That was during the press conference. But right after the press conference, and many more people are sticking cameras and microphones in front of Deontay Wilder and all these other guys. And they keep on asking the same questions. Why haven't you fought AJ in the last seven years? Why haven't you fought AJ in the last 55 years? The guy had to go back to what he knows, which is a fact. They offered AJ $50 million. AJ accepted the offer. They made the offer on Instagram. AJ accepted the offer on Instagram. Eddie Hand came out and said, we need proof of funds. Later on, Eddie Hand came back and said, yes, we know the funds are available, but we're just not going to take the fight. So if that, if those sequence of events did happen, then why, how is that on the fact? How is, well, is it fair to say that they have each, each other? While that was that also offered, yeah, while that was also offered, on 20 million, three fight deal, Fight Brazil for 20 million, fight AJ back to back for 100 million. And what did they do? How much is AJ getting? Because of that, we're not going to take the offer. What would you say about that as well then? Okay. If you think about it, like I've been, I've been trying to make a fight with someone. I offered him 50 million. He turned it down. He offered me 15 million flat fee. I accepted it, but they still maneuvered and fought Povetkin instead. After all that stress that had happened, Plus all the name calling, the dragging, the, oh, this guy is a bomb. He's not fought anybody. He has chicken legs. His fans are dumb. He's from Alabama. Oh, this guy is a bomb. He has chicken legs. Oh, this guy is a dosser. Oh, this guy, he has no fans. He hasn't sold nothing. He has only made $1 million in his career. After all that slandering and dragging for years, and then a Wilder still had to go fight Luis Ortiz. Whom was AJ's mandatory? Then Wilder had found a path to success through Tyson Fury, who just came out of retirement and cooks nothing and all that stuff. He found a path to say, yes, okay, since I'm not able to get this other superstar in the division, Anthony Joshua, now I'm, I'm able to get Tyson Fury and God blessed their first fight. It turned out to be a draw. That was what blessed Deontay Wilder. Once the first fight was a draw, the second fight was a hit. Unfortunately, the second fight went very bad for Wilder and that created a third fight so at that point it wasn't even wilder's business anymore with aj wilder wasn't thinking about aj anymore plus if wilder had accepted the the unprepared offer that the zone offered him because john skipper one of the former chairmen of the zone boxing came out and apologized for not preparing properly for the meeting between their team and Deontay Wilder's team. No, what he said, because I watched time. it, he said that maybe they would have... They, they, so, these are his words, exact words, because I watched the interview. As well. He said that we made a take it or leave it offer. So, it was more like, we cannot negotiate this. Just It was more, it was kind of like disrespectful the way they approached it. Yeah? Take it or leave it. That's what we're offering you. Are you going to take it or not? But then, Charlie Finkel in the meeting, right? Because if you watch the interview with um Lou de Bella. Lou de Bella broke everything down. He was in the meeting as well. Essentially, if you go now, they wanted to know what AJ would be earning, right? 
And they're like, you don't need to know what AJ is going to earn. This is what we're offering you. It's like this whole Saudi deal, right? This is exactly how they're dealing with all the fighters. You do not know what the other guy is earning. It's not your business. This is what we are offering you. Are you going to accept it or not? Right? It is yeah, not up to you as a fighter to say, you know what? Well, I need to negotiate this money and blah, blah, blah. This fee, sorry. Um, yeah, that was what happened with that thing. But, bro, let's keep it real, man. If you're willing to bet, to, to bet on yourself, if you're willing mm -hmm. to bet and say, if you guys are going to offer me a flat fee, I'm not going to take that flat fee because I believe I can make more money and more achievement in my career if I go the other direction. And that's what Francis Ngannou did. Ngannou was offered $8 million to fight John Jones by the UFC. He turned it down because, no, man, I deserve more than this. And that would have been the highest paid heavyweight, according to the UFC's whatever. So sometimes, and right now, look at where Francis Ngannou is. He's now a bigger, much bigger superstar. And guess what? The same thing happened with Deontay Wilder. If he had accepted the Dizon deal, guess what happened? AJ lost to Andrew Ruiz. So who would Deontay Wilder have fought after Dominic Brazil? He was smart. He turned down the Dizon deal, fought Dominic Brazil, fought Luis Ortiz, and then fought Tyson Fury two times extra. He made more than $100 million in those fights. Mm, I don't think so because all the figures are mine. But yeah, I, th I think when it comes to this subject, anyway, we're always going to have our opinions and all of that. Yeah, exactly. But the business guys know they they, they know exactly what happened. They know why they didn't accept. You know, they know they know why they didn't, they didn't accept the offers and all of that. So yeah, anyway, I'll let you finish my point because I didn't finish your thing. But thanks as well, man. It's good, good point to make. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm just happy. You know what? I, I I'm happy. At, le at this point in their careers, I don't know why AJ still had that poker face, trying to look mean and like. A He's because guy. of Jared Miller, relax, bro. He hates Jared Miller. He's because of Jared. <laughs> he hates the guy. <laughs> the guy cost him his career. He cost him his damn career. What do you expect? The guy is pissed to see him there. He's completely pissed. <laughs> it's because of Jared. You don't see when Jared was talking. He couldn't even wait. He just said, "You shut up." He couldn't wait oh for Jared to even finish his, his sentence. It's because of Jared Miller, bro. <laughs> and, see, bro. Um, let, I, I need to say something real quick so Ty can jump in. Um, um, I forgot to mention. You know, when I said my favorite fights coming up in the card, I said <clears throat> Ty Opetai and Wilder Parker. But I forgot Dubois versus Miller. Miller. I'm looking forward to that fight. Like, yeah. bro, I want Dubois to give that guy a body punch, man. Honestly, I'll punch that guy in his belly, bro. Punch that fat man. That guy's belly is so big, bro. Punch that belly to shreds. That's what Daniel Dubois needs to do. Punch the hell out of um, Big Baby Miller's belly. Big Honestly. Baby Miller, I believe the juice he has been juicing his entire career is what made him go that far. I remember yeah. watching Big Baby versus Dual Pass. And Big Baby was marching forward and, bro, throwing like 600 punches every minute. And he crushed I think people guy. are going to see how poor he is. People are going to see the real Big Baby. How poor yes. of a fighter. People are going to see how what? bad he is. Bro, and guess what? Daniel Dubois is experienced. The guy has fought Joe Joyce. Yeah. He has fought Usyk. Yeah. He's gonna beat Big Baby, bro. I believe He's so. Actually, gonna beat Big Baby. Yeah. And I believe so. I hope there's gonna be proper drug testing. I, nobody can even mess with that situation when it's Big Baby. I believe they can't be that stupid to allow Big Baby not be fully tested. So if there is full drug testing, then Big Baby is <laughs> is gonna get knocked out, man. Yeah, bro. I think so. Tajagwe, um, your take on this, bro. I I've not, I've not made my own point, so because oh, I, yeah. I need to. Oh yeah, yeah, my yeah. Majura, sorry. I just joined uh, with um, Adewale. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, just I'm, 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 um, um, what, what, what are we talking about? Don't we're talking about no, we're talking about uh, Anthony Joshua, uh, Eddie Earn and Wada in meeting for the first time, and you know after so much drama, and we know. Listen, I've I've always said. We, we, we could go back and forth with each other we all it's always gonna be like this. I'm, I'm gonna say wilder aj they both have faults in it and it you, they, each each of them have to realize they each had faults in it okay it doesn't even matter you know i'm glad aj knew like hey the fight should have happened a long time ago it should have happened right uh you know there's nothing you could do about it now you know, True. It, I, nothing you could do about it now. It's just as simply as making sure you get in the right position to make your fight and to get paid. 
you know. But going back and forth about the past, the past is the past. It's done. Each yep. of these guys have faults in it, and and for the most part, I think they know it. You don't want it to be like Lennox Lewis and uh, um, um, this guy. Riddick Bow. Riddick Bow. You don't want it to be like that, you know. I don't know why they didn't fight. You know, you know, it is what it is. Because if these if these promoters get in the way, which they always do, it's going to be bad for business. If these, if these um, boxing entities get in the way, it's always going to be bad for business. And it seems like all these that I, that I just mentioned, they all got in the way, you know. WBC yeah. didn't do the right thing. These promoters didn't do the right thing, and that's that's where we are right now with with the whole situation. Bro, uh, bro, let me let me just say something quickly. You, do you know that Riddick Bow and Lennox Lewis, they still they still even though they're in their fifties or maybe early sixties, they still haven't fully settled the beef because they never fought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think at the end of the day, like. <sighs> Like, like I do always say that, like Pai just said about the fact that if we want to look at the whole thing, right, I think for fans, we get over emotional sometimes. And I think I've had to learn to be less emotional about these guys and about these fights because at the end of the day, um, they are the ones taking the glory. I'm not taking no glory. Um, they, they're getting the money. I'm not getting no money. You know, I'm just doing all this for excitement and for the fact that I like them as fighters, okay? Um, when we look at your Wilder situation, Wilder, Joshua, Joshua Wilder, they, they were both at fault, and their teams as well. You know, their teams as well. We we can also blame their teams because we cannot say at this point that oh, it is entirely Joshua's fault, and we can't also say that it is entirely Wilder's fault. The both teams, the both fighters, they really should have made this fight happen when they had the opportunity, when they had all this, the glory, when they had the belts, when they had all of this, but they didn't do it. So they are they are to be blamed, you know. Um, but I'm glad that they finally, one way or the other, you know, they met. Although I'm still not entirely happy with the interviews that Wada conducted after the press conference. I think Wada should have just remained consistent. He should have just continued to say that, listen, the past is the past. We're in the present and we need to move on. You know, and you're going to see the fight. We're working on the fight and we're hoping the fight will happen. You know, because what's going to happen again now is if blame game, if they start blaming each, each other again, where AJ is conducting interview and blaming Wilder, and Wilder is conducting interviews and blaming AJ, they're both going to see these interviews later on. All right, so you're better off not conducting any interview. Like AJ didn't conduct no interview; he didn't want to speak to anyone because he was still pissed anyway, and he didn't want to say what he really would really want to say. So he just decided not to do any interviews. So I think that for me would have been a better approach because if they stick the camera to your face, those guys are going to keep asking you the same question over and over again. And then Wilder was like, "Oh, what do you think? I offered him 50 million. There's no need to go back to all of that. You've already done a fantastic press conference." You've already said beautiful things about each other. You just leave it there. And if anybody asks you further questions, just say, listen, guys, I'm just going to keep saying the same thing. The fight didn't happen before, but we're hoping the fight will happen now. We're working on it, and I respect AJ. He respects me, blah, blah, blah. Leave it at that. But as regards at the end, meeting um, Wilder, and see, at the end of the day, right, I have learned this in business. I'm not a massive businessman, but I've done a big business. And I realize that, boy, no matter how much dislike you have towards someone, when money talks, bullshit takes a marathon. It's as simple as that. You will see people mm. bury their hatchets. You will see people bury their hatred. All of a sudden, worst enemies become best friends because ego is involved. So all this mm. nonsense of, oh, we hate each other, uh, you call them this, you call them whatever from Alabama, all that is bullshit. When money is involved, they bury all of that. In fact, if you ask them to kiss, they will kiss. So it's as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> no one should get emotionally involved all of that. At the end of the day, these guys are good. They're going to be getting tens of millions. They're going to be making loads of money. They're going to make history. And we fans are just going to be here to enjoy whatever it is that they give us. So simple well, as Joe, that. I have a question. I have a question, bro. What yeah. do you think about... AJ potentially fighting Filip Hergovic for the vacant IBF AJ before Wilder. That's the thing. So that's the thing I'm not happy with. I think that AJ is more 
interested in the belt. And I think AJ at this point should understand that he has held most of these belts. He's a big superstar. He has made shite loads of money. Just fight Wilder. But he's so he's not afraid of Wilder, but he's so keen on becoming a three-time world champion. I mean, you can still go for the belt after Wilder, win, lose, or draw. You can still go for the belt. But I think the path AJ is trying to follow is I fight Wallen, yeah, and then I fight Ergovic, and he thinks he can beat both of those guys. Then I go fight Wilder with the belt. Then the fight becomes bigger. But he also needs to understand that Wilder is coming older, and also the fight is not going to be as interesting because Wilder is almost 40, man. Just fight the guy now and give us a good fight. Win, lose, or draw, we're going to love the both of you. We're going to honor and cherish the both of you. But I, I have to be honest, I think the part they're trying to follow is beat Wallen, beat Ergovic, get the IBA belt, and then go into wider fight. I think that's what they want to do. I really think so. I think that's disappointing, honestly. It is very disappointing. I'm actually not happy about that. As much as I'm, I'm a big AJ fan, in fact, maybe a fan, fan boy to an extent, I actually hate that. I don't like that at all. You've already had the belt twice. What more do you need, man? You've been, you've been, uh, you've been, you've been champion, man. You've held this belt twice, man. Unified twice. Come on, man. You've made a whole lot of money. You're a mega superstar. Mega. I live in Ireland. Yeah, even in my town, yeah, you've got AJ's big John, Lucas and whatever everywhere, even till date, till today. And I live in this small country. I was in Germany in January. I am if you can, I mean you really can testify to this. AJ's big board is there in, in, in places, in a lot of places. So you already you are, you are everywhere. Just leave the belt, man. Go fight Wilder. When lose or draw, you can still you're still gonna be ranked high anyway. And you're still a young lad. You're 34. You still got time, bro. But that's what he wants to do. That's his life. That's his career. It's not mine. You know, the fact that I support him does not mean that I'm going to support all of his decisions. And if that is what he's trying to do, I'm not going to call it a dog, but I just think it's a, it's a, it's a dumb move. I'm sorry. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your take on this. Guys, you've heard it from our brothers. Todd Jagwe. Adewale and of course Mayo Joe. God bless you for always support the channel and stay tuned for my super right here.